Today, we're going to revisit our look at Ilford HB5. I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks, everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Gray Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then, with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now, the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then, once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X. And that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing. And uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity, thus the gray card plus rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I want to show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you want to go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. Well, here we have our Tri-X and here we have our HP5. And as you can see from my expression, I'm a little bit surprised to be back here. So this is our second attempt at HP5. The original video holds the honor of the most hated video I have ever made in the two and a half years I've been doing these, uh, at least up to this point. Who knows when this one's gonna come out. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and redo it. Um, now we can see there are some immediate differences down here in the spectral response. We have a little bit, surprisingly, lighter yellow. That's the first time we have seen that sort of response at all. The rest of them look the same. The other column looks the same. But for some reason, yellow wanted to come out a little lighter. Overall, I would say we have a very similar look. Now, some of you may be thinking, why does this look a little different than this in terms of 
my head being a little higher and this being a little higher. Well, I'll tell you, the first time I shot this and this whole batch of prints, the film, or rather the camera, the batteries died. Uh, and so I had to go get another roll of film, but I couldn't get it until the next day. So technically I was sitting slightly different um, because I had to um, go get some film and come back, uh, but I had to take the camera down and put it back up. So while we got it almost exactly perfect, it is a little different, and I know you all really don't like things to be a little bit different, uh, because you really hated that I was wearing a different shirt. Well, this time it's the same shirt. Smelt a little more, because now I'm wearing it day two, but hey, I'll make that sacrifice for you guys. Other than that, we have the exact same lighting, the exact, exact same um, exposure, and everything. So this is a 400, this is a 400 that gave us the same detail. All right, let's go ahead, zoom in, and look at some of the uh, exact details we have um, to see how our grain and everything looks compared. Now, looking at the wide view though, other than the slightly different yellow response here, I would say our overall contrast is the same, but as we have seen with some of our other Ilford films, I think we can start to agree that there is a little bit of difference in how the highlights are separated versus Kodak highlights. So overall, we're the same, but the individual specifics might be a little bit different. Okay, let's zoom in, take a closer look. All right, here we are, grain assessment. And I have to be honest, I feel it's maybe splitting hairs, but I feel like Tri-X is just a bit finer, just a tiny bit finer detail, or uh, uh, grain size, than the HP5. I think you would be hard pressed to see this in most photographs, I think we are kind of going to an extreme with such a close side-by-side -side comparison of 35 millimeter blown up to 11 by 14 of a smooth medium lit subject as the gray paper background that I'm using here. I think in actual photographs, you would probably not be able to tell a difference one way or the other between the grain of one film or the other. All right, let's look at the uh, first shoulder. All right, here is the shadow shoulder. We can see, again, the grain texture side by side. You can decide for yourself which is finer. If there is a difference, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna leave this to, to your call. When it comes to shadow separation of the wrinkles of the shirt, um, I would say we're pretty close to one another. I don't know if there's really much difference between the shadow separation of these two when it comes down to actual practical use. All right, let's look at the other side. Okay, on this side, sharpness, detail, pretty much exactly the same. This is a very sharp, very sharp film. It has really good uh, acuteness with the stock D76 the uh, detail in the ribbing of the collar, nice and sharp, very crisp, very clear. The stitching on the shoulder, again, pretty much identical in terms of clarity and sharpness, as is the texture of the fabric itself. And as you can see, being the next day, my neck beard is starting to grow back in. Uh, and yes, that is one day's worth of growth. I have been shaving this beard since eighth grade. All right, and here we are on the face. Again, as I mentioned earlier, our overall contrast is pretty identical, but how it's treating the particulars is slightly different. So with the Kodak, you can see there is that thin line of highlight down the bridge of my nose and then it goes into a darker tone on the left and the right. So there's a greater separation of the tonality between those two areas. Here on the HP5, 
that highlight is blended with the tone of the gray on the the side of my nose and in the center of my nose pretty close. They're not separating very much. So the highlight tones kind of smooth together more with the Ilford than they do in the Kodak. You can see that also with the highlight of my forehead uh, above my eye. The Tri-X, that highlight is more apparent and it falls off faster to a more mid-tone for the rest of my forehead, whereas the Ilford, that highlight, stays bright, or maybe the highlight isn't quite as bright. I don't know, I really wanna say that maybe those mid-tones on either side of that highlight are still relatively light. So again, it's not separating the tones as much, but the overall brightness is the same for that highlight. So just a different treatment of the higher end of the tonal scale, but the overall scale remains the same. Is one better than the other? No. Uh, it is entirely up to personal taste as to which one you like. So take that for what it is, and, uh, and we're gonna call that a day. Go ahead and roast me as much as you want in the comments for whatever differences there are, but the differences are the differences. This is, this is as close to a straight side-by-side -side comparison as I think you're ever gonna be able to get, and it's just going to show the naked differences between the two. But, you know, that's in the name of the channel, right? Okay, uh, thank you all for watching. Please help uh, support this channel through either my Patreon page, my merchandise, or just keep, keep clicking the, uh, the videos to watch them to earn that ad revenue so I can keep bringing you more content. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and we will see you next time.